Hi guys, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and we're just going to continue on from our last tutorial, which is using Playmaker, the VRTK, our custom Playmaker actions, which you can get from our GitHub account, and using all this to move a third person controller, a third person object. In this case, we're going to use force in to do that instead of using this uh, character controller. Now, you need to watch the previous tutorial to get set up, um, most likely. If not, you might have a little difficulty following along because we're just going to build on off of what we already had. So we were looking at the right controller on the VRTK, and we had used the character controller to move this cube. So there's some pros and cons to that. Is the con, of course, is that it's not actually using any force to move it. So if your game is based on physics, for example, this is not the ideal way to do it. Of course, it uh, does work with nav mesh and everything else like that very well. So that's the, the pro to this. Now let's look at using force. So to make force work on this cube, we're going to want to remove this character controller. And we need to add a rigid body. And to make this work the way I want, I'm actually going to freeze the rotation. I know it sounds weird, but if you don't do this, it's not going to work the way you hope. Um, maybe some people out there who are better with physics can um, find some ways around this, but I'm kind of a noob when it comes to these things, so I just do what works. Now we're going to go back to the right controller, and we've got it already set up just the way we had it before. And we're only going to only going to need to make a few changes. So we still have the listener working that's waiting for the touchpad to be pressed. And then when that's true, it fires off the event to bring us to the mover. And in this mover state, we want it to be moved by force. It's just my description. And this uh, second state, uh, we still want to get the touchpad access and store it into a vector two. It's going to take those uh, get out the vector 2 to an X and a Y. Then we got to put those X and Y into a vector 3 so we have a nice vector 3 all packaged up. Now what we don't want is the simple controller move or controller simple move so we're going to remove that component. We don't want it to have a smooth directional look. We're going to remove that component for now and we still need to check if the button's being pressed and we still need a bool test. So what we want to do is add some force to this. So we're just going to choose add force and double click. Now we need this to be farther down on our list. It's a little too high. We need it after the touchpad access after vector three. So there we go, should be just right after your vector three. So we got a vector three and we're gonna feed that into this add force. Now, what do we wanna add force to? I'm gonna select the game object. In this case, it's my boop bop box, which we added a rigid body to. And the position doesn't matter so much as we just gonna feed it in the vector three we created. And the space needs to be not the world space, but the self space. And of course, we need this to be every frame to keep going. And the mode I'm going to use is force mode. Now, I already know this because I've experimented with this, that just the touchpad press is basically from um, 0 to 1. So 0 to 1, the maximum amount of force that's going to be applied is 1, which is really not a lot of force, as in this box is probably not going to slide al along the floor. So we need to multiply the force. And I know this already from experimentation, so let's just skip the trial and error and get straight to it. And I'm going to take a vector 3 multiply. And let's drag this down. We want it to be right after the vector 3, but before we add force. And so we're going to use our touch 3 vector variable. And we're going to multiply the force by, say, um, I don't know, let's just say by 10 or 5 or I don't know, we'll go 5 and every frame. So now 1 will become 5. So hopefully our boop bop box will move more smoothly. Now, of course, you can go to your boop bop box in the inspector and on the box collider, you could set up different kinds of materials to make this go more or less smooth. 
Um, you could also set up the drag to be different or the mass or whatnot. But just for this little uh, quick tutorial, we're going to keep it like this. Let's give it a play and see. Okay, so boop up failed to move here. Let's see what's going on. Every frame, every frame, every frame. It's all good. So, got the vector three, cell force, every frame. Let's try and add a little more force. Let's just jump it up to 30 and see if that helps us out. Right, so as you saw, it needs a fair amount of force to make it move, and then once it does, it has a bit of a slide, so you might need to add some drag to make that stop more smoothly, if that's the way you want to do it. But I ended up needing to add at least 30 of force to make it go. So there you go, um, another method of moving a, a third-person object around you.